Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the final video on um, Away3D into Flash Builder. And for this last video, what we're going to actually do is we're going to actually modify Away3D. Uh, so the interactivity actually gives us a clue on what we're clicking on. So let me show you the old program and show you where we're headed. So if, if we come along here to the old program, the program we just finished, we click on a uh, mesh, it changes color. Basically, the color is being randomized. And notice the click, too. If you click, it doesn't do anything. But when you let up, that's when the change occurs. And it's important to note that. So let's show you how we're going to modify this program. So here's the modified version of the program. And it doesn't look much different, does it? But when you click on, for example, one of the meshes, it actually tells you what you clicked on. You clicked on a plane. You clicked on a sphere, you clicked on a cube, you clicked on a torus. So it tells you what you clicked on. You think, well, that's not much of a deal. But actually, knowing what you clicked on is a very big deal when it comes to interacting with these uh, meshes and information. So let's go ahead and show you how to build this. It's actually fairly easy. But before we start, we actually need to understand how the program works. So let's go back to our outline. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. We're going to explain how the program works. And we're going to use that control plus rollover click to navigate around the program. That's going to be that's a very important shortcut key for moving around the program. Is we're going to use it all the way through our entire series. Uh, we're going to uh, add a text box to the stage using Design View. So as I've said, we're going to now start using Design View to build interfaces rapidly. We're going to use the name uh, method to actually add a name to the object mesh. And once we add that name, we're going to use a switch case basically to pull that name out and send uh, information to the text box telling us what we clicked on. So switch case is going to be your very best friend when it comes to working with um, basically choosing various data types. So you want to throw out the idea of the if statement. We'll use that, but when your, your if statement becomes more than two, you need to use a switch statement. So let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is understand how the program works. So I'm in the program right here, so let's just start at the beginning. Uh, when the program is created, basically you have this creation complete handler. And it says control roll over click on that, and when you do that, it takes you to what, ha what happens after it's created. And so uh, that function is executed, and then inside that function, there's an initiation function. So control roll over and click on that. Here's the initiation function here, and three methods are fired the initiation engine, the initiation object, and the initiation listeners. Let's talk about what each one does. So if I roll over and click, it takes me right to the initiation engine. Here it is right here. And this is very, very standard stuff. And so we're going to go through this as we talk about paper vision. But what you want to do is create a camera, create a renderer, and create a view and a scene. And you add that scene to your view. And in paper vision, we call that a viewport. Once you created that viewport, then you want to add that viewport to your stage. And we do that in Flash Builder by using the visual sprite element. So right here I have my sprite. So if I roll over that and click, it should take me down to the very bottom where I've created this visual uh, element. And I'm adding uh, everything to this visual element. And we talked about that last time, so you should understand what that is. Let's go back up. And one last thing, we're going to add another uh, element to the visual element, and that is the uh, stats. Now, what is stats? When we built our Away3D program, we actually brought over uh, two packages. We brought over an Away3D Lite package, and we brought over a .NET package. In that .NET package, there actually is uh, basically just one file, and that's the stats file. So if you roll over or if you click on that, you can actually look at how stats are generated for uh, Away3D. And you should go through that uh, and, and see if you can actually build upon it or at least understand how it works. So let's get out of that. And so you've added that stage, so we finished the first part. So we understand the initiation engine. The next thing we want to do is initiate objects. So we actually want to create our objects. And so let's roll over and click on that. It takes us down to the object code. And we're going to build a plane. So here's our plane. We're going to build a sphere. We're going to build a cube. And we're also going to finally build a torus. And we're going to add all these elements to the scene, which is added to the viewport, which is added to the uh, visual sprite element. So there you go. Now, but there's something missing here. We actually need, at this point, to give this a name so we know what we're clicking on. And this will become apparent as we move on. So let's use the name property. So I'm going to go plane dot name equals, I'm going to give it, a, this is basically a string. And this, we'll call this one my plane. We'll pan down and we'll call this one my sphere. So give it the sphere dot name property and we'll just call it equals my sphere. Actually, you can copy that just to make some things a little bit easier. 
Come down here next and below that for the cube, let's give it a name my cube. And for the last one, we'll do my torus. Now, if you want to make everything look right in the code and put everything in the right position, I can actually highlight my cube and hit the Alt key and just tab up and it puts it in a different position. Just kind of making everything look the same. So now we've added our name and we're adding all our basically visual elements uh, to the scene which is being added to the stage. So what we're doing is that we're actually declaring it. Like for example, in this case, we declare the plane, we position the plane, and we add the plane to the scene. And using the uh, name property, we now give it a name. So when we click on it, we'll know what we're clicking on. So we have one more function to look at. Let's take a look at it. And that's the initiate listeners. And that hit your control key, just roll over it and click on it. And that's basically the last thing we need to do. Now there's two types of listeners, and one is a flash set of listeners, and one is an Away 3D listener. Uh, for this particular demo, we're actually specifically interested in the Away 3D listener. And if you roll over this uh, mouse 3D event, it'll actually take you to the mouse listener, so you can actually examine the package that that mouse listener is being uh, uh, created with. And there it is, it's an Away 3D package. But for the other ones, if you roll over them and click, uh, for example, mouse event, you can see that takes you back to the Flash uh, package itself. And you can see that's not an Away 3D uh, element. So it's the Away 3D element that we're interested in, so let's roll over and click on that uh, handler. So the way this works is basically you have a listener on your scene, you add that Away 3D mouse listener, and then once you click up, so basically you're not click down, but click up or let go of the mouse, you're sent to this method on scene mouse up. Let's hold our control click and click on that. Here's that method right there. Now let's explain how this works. Basically you're bringing in some data. Because you clicked on it, there's an event so it brings in some data through that event right here and what you're going to do is bring in some mesh data and you declare the mesh and then you change the mesh's color by changing its material which is happening randomly how do I figure out how this works well what I do is roll over and click on the wire color that takes me to uh, basically that material but roll over super click on that and that takes me to the random method so you can see right here just by examining that whenever I click on that particular uh, method, the wire frame is created, the mesh is created, but it's created with a random color. So there you go. Just by using this control click method, you can actually move around the program and figure out how it's built. So all we have to do now is uh, basically go back to our program, uh, put a switch case in here, and then hook that switch case up to a design element and pretty much that will uh, give us the name of whatever we clicked on. So let's put in the switch case. I've got it in my clipboard here. So let's go ahead and paste that in. So what's happening in the switch case is I'm accessing that mesh.name quantity that I assigned in the last uh, uh, method. And whenever I see that particular name, like my plane, or my sphere, or my torus, or my cube, I send what you clicked on to a text box on the stage. So let's go to design view and put that text box on the stage and see if the program works. So click on design and now let's go to windows and click on components and let's drag a text box to the stage. In this case I'll go ahead and use a rich text. Okay, And now I can play with its properties so make sure you uh, go to windows and click on properties and that will give you the ability to work with the properties of whatever you put on the stage. Here's our properties right here. And I'm actually going to increase the text size to, let's go to 16. I'll stretch it out a little bit. There we go. And then I'll give it the ID name of my name. So if I go back to design view now, we can see in the switch case is actually sending the information to my name. Now there's one more thing you need to do in the properties panel. Notice that I have a black background. So uh, I want to change my black background to white so it actually shows up on the stage. Hit OK. And I also basically want to move that so I can see that. And now let's run the program and see if it works. So here's my rich text box right here. 
So whenever I click on a mesh, you can see it changes the name. You clicked on a plane, you clicked on a sphere, you clicked on a cube, and you clicked on a torus. Now this whole idea of knowing what you clicked on is going to become essential as we move on and build more advanced data-driven applications. But that pretty much wraps everything up. That's how you would modify a program like this to actually bring in data using the design view. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.